This is the closing and the climax of three weeks of Back to God Revival. And we can say that we appreciate God. We appreciate what God has been doing in the midst of all that has taken place on this boulevard here. God has been very good to us. We also thank the Lord for the souls that have been saved and the bodies that have been healed. Nobody but a God could do a thing like this. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This is what I call neutral ground. There are people that will come to a tent service that won't attend church. They feel more comfortable coming to this setting. And we can just say that the Lord has been good to us. If you've been blessed in this meeting, I want you to get up and give God a praise right now. Just get up and praise Him for it. There's, you know, badness on every corner. You know, and a lot of people in the vicinity need to come, including myself. You smoke and drink? Yes, sir. You want to stay the night? Yes, sir. Do. Lift your hands up. We are here with the gospel, trying to reach the unreachable, the lost, and just anyone that wants an uplift, wants a deliverance of God. Into my life. Into my life. It's sitting right in the heart of all the drugs and all the addicts and everything. You know what I'm saying? And you know, some people think that you can't you can't go to God unless you clean up and stop taking drugs, but in the Bible it says come as you are. Come out! There it goes. Yay. He's ready now. Get down there with him, somebody. When people are poor and rejected by the mainstream of the society, they are often looking for something that will make them feel satisfied within. And if someone can take the Christian gospel and the Old Testament Psalms and prophets and put all of that to music and make them feel good and, and play on some themes that are, that are so soothing and they rejoice with it, they've got a right to do that. That's what we mean by freedom of religion. church at our descendant, we really can't get uh, the poor people around that church to come to our church because we too, we're too well dressed and too well educated, they don't feel comfortable there. The question is when mainline Protestants, in quotation marks, criticize these other people, it's a little bit of a guilt feeling that we have because we think that we've missed the boat somewhere, we've not met the needs of these people. Until tomorrow night, every person, get ready tomorrow night, tomorrow night, Holy Ghost night, tell everybody about the service that's going on on this corner. God bless you, and we three people and tell them I love you and I love Jesus. And down in Jesus' name. Those that are here that are sick, I want you to step out your seat right now. If you're here, anyone here tonight, and, and, and I want you to get ready because God is going to do something tonight. And you know what we've got to learn to do, saints? We've got to learn to trust God. The preacher lay hands on me. Glass of riders was in both legs. So I don't feel anything now. What do you think happened? I think he, uh, God healed me. I know he did. What's wrong with your chest, sir? The doctor said I had a hole in the heart. You had a hole in your heart? You have any complications? Yeah. Just I'll be tired of it. You get tired. Yeah. Start walking. Come on. Put your hands up. You had a fever. Start walking and come back up here. Put your hands up and begin to praise God. I want you to start walking and praise God. Come on. Put your hands up. Say hallelujah. The mind has is very powerful and it can heal. And these people, this healer mostly, or preacher mostly, they can cause 
they can cause people uh, to start the healing process and heal themselves. You think you can heal the sick? I believe that I'm an instrument. Because of that, I can exercise all of the power of God. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. At a given moment, anything can happen. Anything. I was sick. I had cancer. I don't have it anymore. And I feel that I'm healed. You just feel you don't have it. Has a doctor told you you don't have it? Well, I feel that I don't have it, but I, I, I'm pretty sure when I go back, he's going to say I don't have it anymore. I know that. In the medical profession, doctors did not want to believe this. Um, but uh, I have seen it over the years. In my, I've been a doctor for 25 years, and I've seen people who had strong mental energies heal themselves. I don't feel it, and that's going down too. Look at that. Thank you, you see that? Thank you, Jesus. Look at that. It's going down. Thank you, Jesus. That growth went down. Go ahead and run. Run. Somebody help him. So these people who are healers, who are preachers, they can uh, do the same thing by making the person believe and the brain producing whatever chemicals it is to heal the body. You don't feel like a brain that got a fever. No, I'm going away. It's going. Say what? It's going. It's going now. The fever's gone. Take off and run. Come on. Somebody help us. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a gift that that God Until tomorrow night, every person, get ready tomorrow night, tomorrow night, Holy Ghost night, tell everybody about the service that's going on on this corner. God bless you, and we three people and tell them, I love you and I love Jesus. And down in Jesus' name. To him, that he can be a help to people in more than one way. I said, I believe the water's being troubled right now. Grab somebody's head and go to leaping and shouting and praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Not everyone is a prophet. Now, God doesn't use me in the manner that he uses him. I preach, I sing, I pray, but the prophetic gift, I don't have that as he has it. You know, I, I got to get some plans. Yeah. 23 years ago, I went into New Haven, Connecticut to pastor a church there. And uh, he was a little boy with the Bible in his hand. And when they wouldn't let him go to church, his foster parents, he'd go out in the yard and preach to the dogs and cats <laughs> and to the trees. So they thought they really had a problem, child. My mother was so out of it that she was forced to give me up. Your father? Father never raised me or really had anything to do with me. Hallelujah. I was placed in the hands of the state and then they gave me a home. And as time went on, I just entered into that supernatural realm. Hallelujah! Yes, sir! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Hallelujah! Yes, sir! I've had angels to come and stand by my crib and stand by my bed. Gave me to know that there was something divine happening within myself. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory! Several times I've... God speak to me and so many words he said you are my prophet whoever comes with promises needs to be examined uh, in the book of the Acts of the Apostles uh, so much time is spent on people who were fakers who claim to be uh, prophets of God but who had private motives the preachers actually get up in the pulpit and give the people a mandate before they give their uh, exegete their service. It's a sermon. Beware. Don't go down there. The kind of things that would really hurt you if you weren't really called of God. Come on!
on, come on, I'm gonna lay my hands on you. Praise him. It almost brings you back to the old days and the tent that Moses had in Exodus outside of the camp. They would go inside and the glory of God would enter in. Lift your hands all the way up. Woo! Oh, there we go. Oh, it's mass hypnosis. It is definitely mass hypnosis. And then at the point when he does lay her hands, they into that state of mind where they want to and they they go into that trance. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Hey, whoop, there she go. There we go. Some turn to alcohol. Some turn to drugs. Some say, well, I'll just end my life. But there's somebody else say, I'm going to church. Here they're getting a natural high, high from religion. Yes, but the consequences may not be any different. Your joy ought to come out of the change that takes place in your life. And not just from your spine tingling. Don't put your hands on them. You can go on a chemical high and go on one of these kinds of highs and wake up the next day with all of your problems just the same way they were before you got high. Come on, put your hands up. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, now take my hands off you start dancing. Oh. A man right here, he got baptized last time. We come over there. That's how much of an impact we'll have on people. Lift your hands up at this time. Until tomorrow night, every person, get ready tomorrow night, tomorrow night, Holy Ghost night, tell everybody about the service that's going on on this corner. God bless you and we three people and tell them I love you and I love Jesus. It's unexplained. We have to be baptized if you know what it feels like. I'm going to be baptized. What does that mean? I'm going to have the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Holy. Hallelujah. Bend down in Jesus' name. Hey, bend down in Jesus' name. If we've not gotten close enough to these people, if we've not shown them enough love and outreach for them to feel comfortable amongst us, we really ought not to be complaining that somebody else came and gave them a new name and gave them a feeling of significance. We really ought not to complain. At least it's one night escape. Hallelujah! Woo! Everybody! Woo! And here's a man who becomes a father figure, a leader, and by identifying with him, there is this whole ecstasy that they experience. They serve me and I serve them. It's a relationship. It's a family. I feel that I am a spiritual father. And here I experience it on this corner. Lift your hands up at this time. Until tomorrow night, every person, get ready tomorrow night, tomorrow night, Holy Ghost night, tell everybody about the service that's going on on this corner. God bless you, and we three people, and tell them I love you and I love Jesus. Bend down in Jesus' name.